<laughs> the last vlog you watched, which I'm assuming you watched like two or three days ago, was actually three weeks ago. <laughs> for us. <laughs> We've been on this morning for three weeks because yeah. we kind of got stuck. I mean... We literally got stuck. We, we, we came up the... Partly we were exhausted. We were totally exhausted. We came up the air from Castleford, which was the last stoppage we had to pass on our epic journey up. Came up the lock and immediately we're like, that's it, we're going to sleep. <laughs> which we did. We were very... We, like, we locked out on this mooring. Well, actually, we, first of all, we moored by the lock and then a couple of days later we moved over here. So we're quite by a green bank and just on the other side of the bank is the river air itself. So we're on a canal cutting and then there's river air there. It's like a 10 minute walk that way to a little. Behind the little is a massive field for George. So if he gets bored of running around on this bit of green, we take him over there. So there's a Morrison's as well. So there's a train station. We're, we're pretty it's, much covered for everything we need. Um, so it was the perfect mooring to. It's a short trip to do laundry. Yeah. It's yeah, it's been really good. But part of the reason we got sort of stuck here was the fact that the air went into flood immediately beside us and actually raised up to the point where it was like three inches from over the bank. The weir there, the water actually reached the point where it was so overtopping the weir that you couldn't you tell couldn't the weir see, was you there. You couldn't see there was a weir. So it was, it was seriously high. <laughs> and that shut down a bunch of the locks below us and everything. So we've basically just been sort of waiting for stoppages to clear. Stoppages have now effectively cleared as far as Doncaster. We can at least get down to... The new Junction Canal. Yes. So we're not going that far today. No, but, no, um, no, but we've done that thing, well, I've done that thing, where we've been stopped for three weeks, and now I just don't want to move. Like, part of me has got cabin fever and does want some new surroundings, but it's so easy here. And also, just the thought of cruising, I'm like, how do we even do that now? Like, yeah. I can, I can understand marina life suddenly. But the, um, the main reason we're actually moving today is because our water tank is beyond empty. <laughs> So yeah, it's gotten to. so far that it doesn't, it stopped dropping any lower. Like our gauge stopped going any lower at some point. So, so the water hasn't quite started coming out brown yet, but um, no, we, we need showers and stuff. So green. Yeah, there is definitely a tap in Ferrybridge Lock, which is the last lock, but it's in the lock and you and the lock is actually shut. Like the river is shut at the moment because of the floods. So I don't even know if you can open the gates. We didn't try, basically. We could have tried. But we yeah, there try. were some men there a couple of days ago who volunteered to open them for us if we wanted to move, and we didn't want to move. <laughs> so now we need to move. We are going to throw the chains off and um, untie and head that way. Joe will walk. We're not really going very far. We're going as far as Shepherd's Bridge to see if there's a water point there that's actually in service. If it is in service, we'll more up there, fill up with water, which will probably take at least an hour yeah. or so. And then um, once full, we will continue on to the nearest available morning. If it isn't operable, then we're going to have to continue on to, is it Whitley Bridge or? Whitney or something, Whitney Bridge. I can't remember. Yeah, because at that point, there's quite a few water taps um, just above the next lock, so. But it's about noon and we've only got four hours of daylight, so we need to get going. We need to get moving, so we're on our way. <laughs> This really has been a great place to stop and recover from all our recent adventures. There's hardly been any boat traffic and the footpath is up there on the bank, so it's been incredibly quiet despite being so close to town. You can see the remaining towers of the Ferrybridge power station in the distance behind us. We are currently on the main line of the Air and Calder navigation, which runs all the way to Gaul where it meets the Yorkshire Ouse. The river Air was made navigable from Gaul to Leeds in 1704. By 1835, all of the original locks had been replaced to accommodate much larger vessels. The navigation is still used by commercial traffic today. Here we pass the King's Flour Mill. There are said to have been mills on this site for centuries, although this is a modern rebuild and no part of the original water mill remains.
There's an old wharf here, and you can see the remains of a coal chute used for loading barges and tom puddings. As we approach the Bank Dole's junction, we find there's a fishing event on. Michael sticks to the port bank to cause as little disturbance as possible. Then, once under Shepherd's Bridge, they switch sides, so he does too. Here we pass Harker's Boatyard at Fernley Green, which is right at the Bank Dole's junction. We're heading towards school, but we take a detour towards the Selby Canal in search of the water tap. It's only a few hundred metres to the lock, but there's no sign of the tap. We moor up and take a walk beyond the lock, but we still can't find it. It's pretty desolate and deserted up here. Time to give up and move on. We turn around and head back towards the main line, and Michael finally spots the tap on the offside. It's definitely been decommissioned, and the bank is completely overgrown. It's a little frustrating that it's still showing on the CRT's online map. Michael stops to pick George and I up, and then we turn back onto the main line of the air and call to navigation. someone at home inside this boat, but I wonder what it's like inside. I can't see any windows. This feels like a rather bleak section of navigation. The landscapes are really flat and the gloomy weather really doesn't help. There's also lots of visible remnants of industry's past. This is the site of the Kellingley Colliery, Britain's last deep coal mine. It was closed in 2015 and the site has since been completely flattened. It's hard to visualise how busy this wharf must have been at one point. See the M62 in the distance, and behind it is an artificial hill created by ash deposits.
We think that's the Egpra power station you can see through the grey. When we arrive at Whitley Lock, we find there's a boat using the water point, so we stop and wait. There's another couple of taps below the lock. The only one we see would require us to reverse down a channel towards the weir, so we figure it would be easier just to wait for this one. Finally, it's our turn to move on to the water point and fill our very empty tank. We push across to the other side of the navigation to the visitor moorings, ready to go down the lock in the morning. There's George, right there, chewing his ball. It's a bit noisy here because there's an N62 again that uh, keeps following us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as far as we can tell, as we travel across the country, the Prime Minister and company, um, they like to redirect the M62 every once in a while. So we made to the junction with Selby, um, where there was supposed to be a water point. Um, it's listed on the Canal and River Trust site, so we had high confidence. It was in our Nicholson's Guide. It is there, but it's just the housing, not the actual standpipe. So there is no water point there. So we got to the Selby lock and had to effectively do a 180. Joe didn't think I'd be able to turn. No, I find it really difficult sometimes to judge the width of the navigation. It was 59 feet. It wasn't, it was, <laughs> it was about 70 feet. <laughs> there was lots of room. Yeah, it was fine. But it's because it's it narrowed, like it was yeah, much it wider. Yeah, sort of pinched and in right towards where the Where you lock. decided to turn, it narrowed, so yeah. I was a bit unsure. But but I was like, I don't really want to reverse, and I'm pretty sure I can make this. Yeah, so. It was loads of <laughs> so spun around, came back, and then got on to the quite bleak industrial wastelandy area south of Nottingley where there seems to be a whole bunch of land that's in the process of being reclaimed and um, yeah didn't you say it had suffered a lot of subsidence so yeah, it's yeah kind of, there's, there's nothing there there's railway lines that potentially used to go there they might still go there <laughs> and um there's some railway cars cars just sitting there and there's some remnants of like coal fields but it's just a bit weird really yeah. yeah and like you pass one section that you can see it on google maps it's just a great big flat graded kind of vaguely bone colored I, I have no idea what's there it must be some sort of environmental remediation or something anyway it's it's a lot of that then relatively late i guess probably out a mile and a half down it started getting quite pleasant again you know it wasn't it was, it was still okay. little bits of industry and stuff i think the gray weather didn't help because we could see um Egbra, that's probably not pronounced Egbra. No. <laughs> um, power station and through the through the haze and Yeah, and it was quite a bit of haze. It it got greener. It yeah. got sort of nicer. We passed that one point where there was all of the the really dark um, 
coal fields and it was really bleak and then it went we passed a bridge and a boat and all of a sudden it was like a little bit nicer but then off in the distance was the m62 getting closer and closer and closer which we're now moored under <laughs> yeah so now it's actually quite pleasant there's a there's a large field beside us there's a bit of a, a small brook or creek right beside us followed by some nice fields there's fields over that way there's the sound of the water churning over the weir of the lock it's all relatively pleasant except for the huge number of cars going past yeah so we got the we got to the lock and there's a tap just above the lock and there's a tap below it but the one below is like right by the weir so you kind of have to back up into the water of into the weir the, into the overflow and it's it's heavily overflowing and yeah because i didn't really fancy doing a lock we just decided to wait for the water point above the lock so there was a boat on there that must have taken about half an hour and then then it was our turn and then we just moved across to the other side which isn't as nice as apparently the moorings over there are private even though the space and we couldn't see a sign but a couple of people told us we were private they were private so we thought we better not stop there so we came over here to where it's quite a bit harder to moor so <laughs> that was probably a good thing because immediately after we left a boat pulled on to the mooring we were at they had a car planned and everything so maybe that's their for you know mooring yeah. and, we, and we were blocking it yeah it's really nice over there because there's hard standing and there's lights and everything whereas here you've got that like really undulated siding so unless you get your boat right in the right place you've got a big step off so you've managed to do it at the front but it means at the back there's like a foot and a half to, yeah. to step over so it's not ideal so for that reason i think we'll probably move on oh and for the, the road noise because i actually was thinking that this this isn't bad for permanent moorings like you know there's there's services that are fairly convenient it's you know got local road access it looked all good and then i was like wow that noise is really something yeah, i bet it goes quite late as well um i bet it goes 24 hours all right, so it was a good first, very short first cruise, although it's taken us hours because we had to wait for the water. Yeah, but tomorrow we'll go down the lock and probably proceed forward to nearer the next lock. Yeah. Yeah. See where we end up. See, if we find a nice morning, we could stop for a few days. Two days. I'm going right, to go through the ball for George. Not for long, because it's dark. Although he can see until it gets to the point I can't even see the grass, and he can see the ball somehow. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and comment down below. If you'd like to, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notifications. Hit that bell. Only nine, ten attempts. Uh, so we've got to... We found... Oh, and for the, the noise road. The noise road? The road noise. Um, just south of um, Nottingley, so yeah. just south of just south of Wadding. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below if you want to. Hit the bell for the notifications thing. Never mind that shit. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and comment down below if you want to. Hit the notification. Damn it. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. If you want to, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification buttons if you want to get notifications, blah, blah, blah. Last time, swear to God.